And that's what I'm talking about. Just when you thought grilled cheese couldn't get any easier or tastier, thanks to Texas toast, we don't even need to butter the bread. Pile on the cheese and wait for the gooey inside and crunchy outside. And look at that epic cheese bowl by yours truly, a little swim and marinara for the perfect bite. No breading process required for this incredible easy snack. Bread, string cheese, and garlic butter are all you need. That good old fashioned white bread holds together on its own, kind of like how it used to stick to the roof of your mouth. You know what I'm saying. Butter helps it get super crispy when you air fry it at 400 for five minutes. And listen to the perfect bite. Told ya. It's like cinnamon rolls, but pizza. Just when I thought pizza couldn't get more fun, this recipe starts with pre-made pizza dough, roll it into a large rectangle, and then top it with whatever sauce and desired toppings you like. Roll it up nice and tightly and then cut it into 12 pieces. Place them about one inch apart in a nine by 13 baking dish and bake them at 375 to 400 degrees until they're golden, a little crisp around the edges and bubbly inside. Obviously I couldn't top these with icing. I thought about a ranch drizzle, but then I remembered that yummy garlic butter that comes with our favorite delivery pizza. It makes the perfect glaze. This is a great way to serve pizza at a party. They're saucy, cheesy, gooey, and a little chewy. So delicious, only about five ingredients. Pizza for breakfast, anyone? When you want a calzone, but you're also lazy. TikTok made me do it. Frozen pizza turned calzone. This might sound ridiculous, but just wait. I discovered this on someone's TikTok video posted after what seems to be a late night of partying, and the idea is genius. Thaw the pizza till it's able to roll and bake it at 375 for 20 minutes, or until it's crusty. This is how I turn tortellini into pizza. If you have five ingredients in two minutes, then you can prepare dinner your kids will love faster than you can go through a drive-thru. Cooking familiar ingredients in a new way is the best trick to make food more exciting. And turning pasta into pizza is just smart. Add whatever toppings your family likes for a gooey delicious weeknight meal. Perfect bite. Cheesy artichoke bread is one of my favorite things my mom used to make and it's what you need to be making at your next party. It's everything you love about creamy artichoke dip and crunchy bread in a perfect package. This recipe came straight out of the 80s from my mom's friend, but I'm telling you it's a recipe you'll want to hold on to. It's great served as an appetizer or alongside a bowl of soup or a crisp summer salad. I love making this because it's super hearty and filling, but it's made with all easy to find ingredients. It can be made the day ahead and then baked just before serving. It gets all gooey and crunchy when it's baked. I like to cut it into strips to stretch it further. Listen to this crunch. This, my friends, is the perfect bite. This is the most incredible way to enjoy grilled cheese and tomato soup. It's the ultimate classic pairing served in a bread bowl with the essential ingredients elevated with blended cheeses and fresh basil. It's the perfect way to share a grilled cheese and tomato soup. You could also double this batch in a large Italian loaf and serve it as a party appetizer. All the goodness is stuffed inside those nooks and crannies. Both kids and adults will love this. Pair it with a glass of white wine. You'll be so happy. I can't even explain how this is the most perfect bite ever. You just have to try it. I promise you won't be disappointed. Mm. Grilled cheeses are better when they're bite sized. I used to think making smaller versions of food was just more work, but I was wrong. These bite sized grilled cheeses are toasty all around, gooey and cheesy in the middle, and they're so easy to make. Toss them in soup or chili or on top of a salad, way better than croutons. Basic, but worth it, I promise. Perfect bite. This isn't your mama's eggplant. You don't even need to pull out a pot or a pan for this recipe. Cut it just like you would a mango going both ways, taking care not to pierce through the skin. If it won't stay open, you can insert a skewer through the back end to hold it open. It tenderizes first in the air fryer with just olive oil, salt, and pepper, and then you top it with your favorite marinara and cheeses. You could also add chicken or ground beef here for extra protein. It's so easy and delicious, and you eat it straight from the shell. It's so good. It's like your own personal package of flavor from that tomato sauce absorbed into the eggplant, that gooey cheese on the top. It tastes indulgent, but it's slow carb, so you can feel good about it. You might want to sit down for this. This is the best way to bake up and serve mac and cheese. Box mix is easy, but any recipe will do. Just add extra cheese and egg and bake it in a loaf pan. The loaf pan is genius on its own because you can bake up smaller batches this way and slice off a serving. Of course, I won't stop there. I lightly bread and air fry this for an incredible snack. It's all about that crunch or make it dinner topped with barbecue. Crunchy, cheesy, tangy, all the things for the perfect bite. Watch me turn this into this. 
Y'all loved the first mac and cheese hack so much that I thought I'd take it one step further by stuffing and rolling it to create something similar to arancini. These are so easy to make with a box of old school mac or it'll work with your leftovers. Fold in some pepperoni and stuff it with a mozzarella ball, way better than a mozzarella stick. The ultimate perfect bite, where pizza meets mac and cheese. This is how to feed a bunch of holiday guests with ease. We're using frozen ravioli instead of pasta sheets to make this an easy and super cheesy comfort meal. We'll make a spinach filling with a package of frozen spinach, already thawed and patted dry, two cups ricotta cheese, a half cup shredded Parmesan, one egg, a quarter teaspoon black pepper and garlic powder, and a half teaspoon salt. Spread this evenly over the ravioli. Top this layer with mozzarella cheese, then stack on more ravioli, marinara sauce, and cheese. The more cheese, the better. Pop this into a 350 degree oven and bake for 50 minutes covered, then 10 minutes uncovered until golden and bubbly. Ravioli meets lasagna in the best comfort meal ever. Leftover lasagna, let's air fry it. Remember the time I fried mac and cheese? Well, same concept and process here. You're gonna start making too much lasagna on purpose. It gives it a whole new look and reminds me of fried ravioli, but better. It's crunchy on the outside, gooey and indulgent on the inside. I'm telling you, this is why air fryers were invented. Listen up. Forget leftover turkey sandwiches. Let's turn these into quesadillas. Get some butter melting in a skillet, set down a large tortilla, and sprinkle with cheese. I'm using Monterey Jack. Down with your leftover turkey just on half of the quesadilla. A Little bit of cranberry. To balance out that sweet, I'm gonna add some pungent green onions and kick it up with some jalapeno. Sweet, salty, spicy, perfect bites. I'm also going to create a dipping sauce with some leftover cranberry and your favorite hot sauce. And why not stir in some cilantro? The easiest way to flip is to start with the cheesy side over the filled side, then flip. What did I tell you? Perfect bite. I'm taking the TikTok feta to the grill. Bites don't get much better than this. Let's make heavenly taco pie. This is inspired by my late and great buddy Matthew and this recipe like him is the life of the party. It's perfect for entertaining because it's easy to serve up and it's affordable. It's also great for an easy weeknight dinner that will make your family so happy. It's layered with simple classic taco fillings surrounded by store-bought pie crust. Bake it and serve it with your favorite toppings. The whole pie is the perfect bite. Taco Tuesday just got so much better. Listen for the crash. This has to be the tastiest way to use up Parmesan rinds. First, I'm gonna start by scraping off the wax exterior. Now I'll cut them into bite-sized pieces and give them a quick rinse under cold water. Onto a microwave-safe plate. Now microwave on high for one minute. Oh my goodness. These things are like hard as rocks. This looks like a dang plate of Cheeto puffs. I just can't get over the texture. That's the real deal, Parmigiano Reggiano. This pumpkin brie has only five ingredients. Cut six pieces of twine and place them in a crisscross fashion. Take a sheet of puff pastry that has been thawed and place it on top. A 12 to 14 ounce wheel of brie fits perfectly in the center. Then add some pumpkin butter. This is a magical ingredient when paired with brie. Trust me. Fold all the edges into the center. The twine creates the grooves in the side of the pumpkin. This is my kind of food craft. Brush with egg wash and bake at 375 for about 15 to 20 minutes. That's the cutest thing I've ever seen. I love a festive centerpiece, especially when it's edible. Now that, my friends, is a perfect bite. Mm. Let's make caprese salad with peaches. I'm swapping sweet summer peaches for tomatoes in this perfect no-cook Italian-inspired side. Creamy burrata cheese is like magic here. Finish with balsamic glaze and a sprinkle of basil and flaky sea salt is the best way to enjoy your summer peaches. Sweet, salty, tangy, perfect bite. 